so we were seeing the various enterprise structure components you can correct me if i am wrong in any of these topics we discussed right wherein you add company company code right sales organization distribution channel warehouse number plant storage location shipping point loading point define and assign these are all the concepts that we have seen right so this would be represented at your ecc system level right so using your transaction code slash n ec02 you can click on your structure navigate search your plant and then click on the display icon you will get a structure this was what we have seen right the transaction code that i am using is ec02 then once this is done we have seen how to create a customer or a vendor from the accounts receivable and accounts payable point of view did we do this for a while i don't mind we can talk for a while and then get yourself muted please yeah i did that right mukunda Yes, sir. And I expected that you should have done your component from the customer point also. In this, you will find few things. You can have a vendor created at a vendor account group level and their screen settings. You can have it at a company code level or at a activity level. activity level is again of three sides central purchase and accounting with three functions call create function change function and display function right once this is done you have to identify a account accounting clerk and a industry that the your object is related with then you perform a number range concept for your vendor and assign that vendor to your account group that is with respect to vendor or customer under financial accounting in financial accounting itself with the global settings you have one more function called fiscal year variant we have selected a fiscal year right assume that every country is having a fiscal year in nature that is your financial calendar this financial calendar will talk about the i am taking it from v3 which is a system defined one from the india point of view where the object starts from april to march us jan to december right so now these activities you are creating a fiscal year variant and you can connect it to your 
company code so when you connect this to your company code right you would able to set up a system for creating a material where you go to logistic general in logistic general you have material master in material master you go to basic settings there is a number format and this number format is 18 digits or 18 characters this can have a concept of a formatting mask code this mask code is important of how are you going to identify a number and this you link it with this step called maintain company code to your for your material management you select your company code and link your since you have linked it at the financier here you are able to write down the period of your current business transaction then you perform your material type you define your material type and assign the material number and you can also perform the key field settings by defining the material group division your material status indicators and your various conditions either for storage and so on this was the configuration step for creating a material once this logistic general is done yeah. yes yes Yeah, you you can you can perform these settings by going to the output format. Yeah, and you use this transaction code OMSL, and you give a template format here. If it is alpha numeric, you said A A I underscore X X. underscore then your minimum length would be four digits including your i other score it would be five digits there is a setting for this from the material management point of view Yeah, this material number, yes, mater material number, you will be getting it from the uh, MM side, right? So you will be maintaining it in warehouse. You will not create any material in warehouse management. Okay, we'll put it in this way. What is your basic question? Yeah, I mean, say suppose if a company has uh, the material numbers that need to be produced, like. A zero zero B zero zero and then it should increment like uh, A zero zero B zero zero one zero 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 two something like that. That's right. I don't know how to set up that. Uh, oh, you don't need to know because that is an MM person's job. Okay. If that is the question, I can give you share some notes regarding that, which would be helpful for you. then we get into logistic execution which is our key area in logistic execution we have our warehouse management in warehouse management you have the concepts of warehousing you have a set of master data in warehouse you have to configure all this component according to your business need
this is under logistic execution of SAP ECC system. When you are performing this, you need to basically identify how your organization needs to, your warehouse component need to look like. Your warehouse component is basically a activity which is going to provide you a flexible automated support for processing of all goods movement and managing your stock in the warehouse. This warehouse is identified with a number we can call this as warehouse complex or warehouse number wherein you are supporting it with the scheduling part and effectively processing all the logistics within your warehouse. If you are performing this warehouse you need to make sure that you are integrating it with a key entity of a term called inventory management where you are going to manage the quantity value of stock at various storage level so your warehouse is going to allow you to map your entire warehouse complex in detail with your storage bin or you have to integrate it with various concepts like inventory management quality management, production supply, transport, HR or delivery processing. If all this has to be integrated, you should know certain functions like how are you going to manage the storage, how are you going to manage the goods movement and how are you going to plan and monitor all the goods issues and warehouse stocks and you will be connecting it with decentralized warehouse management system or centralized warehouse management system where you need to identify whether it is a well integrated landscape or a standalone system. You have to perform certain functions which is going to see with respect to the key terminologies here with your copy controlling parameters of warehouse number, number range, storage bin, storage session, picking area, doors, managing your staging area, performing your storage bins and the material. In this material, you need to keep things which you have to inherit it from the MM site. This is what we have done. We are done with this concept. Yeah. Then we have seen certain strategies. When we talk about the word strategies, how are the principles being maintained with put away strategy, stock removal strategy, return of stock from the vendor, move to production and then returning it back all these are certain strategies where you are activating your storage type, storage station, storage bin type. All this have been done. Now, when we are going, when we need to go little further, you need to keep in mind few scenarios that we are going to deal with. 
the scenarios here would be is the movement of goods taking place so you need to perform some inventory management activities so when you perform the inventory management activity you are supposed to understand the functions that takes place in inventory management of your mm so under your mm you have a component called inventory management which is physical inventory you can perform this at plant level and you perform certain settings so i have selected my plant parameter did i do this creation in your system or did i do it in this system what was our plant is in our our system not in this one I don't know when, uh, how I based, but uh, did we discuss about the strategies? strategies? Yeah, we spoke and about the recording. We spoke about put away strategy. We did that exercise. See, in this, even be if you miss anything, don't worry. It will be covered again because we will be seeing it from the EWM point of view also. Okay, there is nothing that you will be missing. Point number one, and there is nothing that you will be. I will be overwriting certain things. At any given point of time, we will come back to the situations because we will be having a extension from WM to EW. And what is the username? Someone else is also using. My share VC zero two. So, what is your plan? P. P M P M P M Who has entered this session? Hello.
Halo. 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 Who is this? This is Anwar. Please shut down your screen, please. My class is going on. And what all the labs that you have done? Cross put away is a cross docking functionality or a put away functionality. We will discuss that. Don't worry. Yeah. What is the what what is the doubt you have? I mean, I didn't understand. I mean, I, did, I do understand the the normal way of using uh, the uh, number range you will be put in, but I don't know how the cross. Uh, and there is a stack, no uh, stack and. Uh, a level is there. I mean, I don't know how the that is getting in a different way. Like, if you use a different sort of signal. Can you repeat it again? Um, so suppose we have a, in a warehouse, we have a row. I say, suppose the students say, we do have a row, uh -huh. and then we do have a stack, and uh -huh. we do have a level. Uh -huh. So, normal way, we will be like, I say, suppose. Uh, uh, first, we'll be putting in the level, the first stack, and then we'll we'll fill the whole, whole one, right? Yes. But uh, so if you have a sort sequence uh, depend on any one of it. Mm -hmm. So how it works? Uh, that you will be seeing it. Yeah, when the, you will be seeing that part when we are putting this in your document. Yeah. Why why do we need a 
sort sequence. If you want to fill it, uh, fill the the rows differently. You have to select your warehouse yeah, yeah, and yeah. 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 Okay. Warehouse and storage. Uh, what is this numbering? Uh, the, the numbering I didn't understand. What is that? For uh, the four five, they have different three four and. Uh, this is the positioning of your storage bin at what level so r will talk about the row s will talk about the stack l will talk about the level you are keeping it with rr iphen ss iphen ll right here you can go maximum with 10 right maximum 10 okay yeah so you can assign something between 1 and 6 You're getting this point. This is a shelf being designed. Shelf being designed for keeping the product or sorting out the product when the material you are getting from inbound or outbound activity. Then when I show you the racking system, then you will get to know. What was our warehouse number? PMC, storage type. I'm keeping it with fixed what is my storage bin we don't have any storage bin it's a b1 it's not showing anything i think we would have not assigned it this is the output You are doing a cross-lining searching for these sort variables in part of your storage bin keys and basically you are selecting a shelf or a rack which is having a combination of R, S, S, R, S and L. Right? Where are you going to place that particular product and what type of product it is? Assume that if it is a fast moving product, at what level do you want to keep it? And these combinations are assigned with a figure between 1 to 6. Right? And it is based on the positioning of your storage bin that you have designed in your previous component. We did this, I think, right? No, no, this is not done. This part is from the stacking point of view. We did activate storage type search. You defined it. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. What is Storage type indicator. See, in your SAP system, when you talk about the indicators, these are certain point of when you are creating any kind of purchase documents or when you are creating, we will put it in this way. I actually have one 
scenario that we can discuss. I have just picked up it for the physical inventory. Okay. In the physical inventory, right, where you are performing your inventory count and adjustment, right? The scenario is you are trying to create a physical inventory document and you are printing the physical inventory document. You are executing the count and entering the count result in the system. And you are listing the count differences and you are posting the count differences. When I say listing count difference, assume that material A is coming into the warehouse right, with a fixed quantity of 200 units, whereas my purchase order is having 400 units. Right. Physically, I have received 200 units. 200 units is still pending that I am supposed to get it. Now that is the difference, count difference. And I have found this difference after, after a physical inventory being done. And I am posting the difference in my books of account because the money would be given to the vendor based on the ordered and delivered products. Ordered amount is 400 but delivered product is 200. So the first payment would be based on 200. So you have the posting count difference. If you see this business scenario, there is supposed to a event taking place. This event is a periodic physical count needed where you are creating a physical inventory document and the role that you are doing is a warehouse manager and then the printout is being taken when the printout is being taken the quantity you are getting it from the warehouse clerk right all the physical count is entered and it is listed in the list count difference the count is being taken a decision if accepted yes and post it adjust the inventory and end the process if yes if it is no recount it when you do the recount you are sending it back to the physical count Now this is a general process that is taking place in checking the product. These are the people who are involved in the function. You have a plant controller, you have a warehouse clerk, you have a warehouse manager and there is an event taking place. For this function, the end user is going to configure your master data and the organizational data you are supposed to have a business condition you are having a role you are supposed to process the overview you need to know the overview or process steps you create physical inventory documents when you do this you are using this transaction course mi31 mi21 MI04, MI20, MI11, MI20. This is a set of activities that you are doing. This is a part of inventory management performed. And here, when the material is coming in and the, it has to be placed in one location, so the warehouse manager should tell you where to place it. In which bin are you supposed to place it? So at that point of time, you will be coming across these search strategies. Right? So you are activating your 
storage type storage session storage bin you are defining and sorting out the sequences either for put away or picking put away picking cross docking stock removal these are all or return of transfer goods these are all the various strategies that takes place in your warehouse am i clear indicators are when you are pulling the information there should be some kind of determination taking place right if i am saying a person a is associated to how am i going to do the search strategy that is your access sequence indicators is a shortcut method of telling you the system where can you keep the product and how you can access the product from that particular location in general the indicator significance is that in sap still not convinced that you will be seeing little further when we are doing the documentation part see remember all these things you are setting up the process example now assume that i want to create this transaction code mi31 okay naim is are you with the class I don't know. Mine is uh, disconnected. I think it's okay. You know, no problem. Now, in this sheet of yours, you should select your material. right what material will you select if selected what is the plant what is the storage location what is the material type what is the material group and what is your storage bin description this storage bin description right where are you defining it you are defining it in your warehouse system the controlling parameters here you can select data and issue a log you can generate a batch input you can create documents directly right these are all your control parameters and data related with physical inventory at the inventory document header level your planned count date physical inventory number and your reference and your sorting out function according to stock now when you click according to stock what is it talk about it is going to talk about the threshold value of the stock it is going to talk about the materials with zero stock without zero stock with negative stock now this is with reference to stock balances you need to have a sort key if you are having a sort key and if i say that it is plant related storage related material system will go and search with these three conditions only now if i put a condition with plant with storage with storage bin and material then it will search for storage bin description with the plant and then give you the output now this is a indicator and here i am doing it at the document header level you are getting my point and where am i using this i am using it at the end user screen am i convincing is this clear
still not confident answer your ya is not still confident reading sir jo So when you talk about your warehouse movements, right? There are two types of warehouse movements in your warehouse management. Okay. What are they? Inbound and outbound. You can have a warehouse movement that is only affecting the warehouse. There is also a stock transfer within the warehouse, within the warehouse number. and you have to do the posting changes you can also have a warehouse movement that is affecting the entire warehouse system if it is affecting the entire warehouse system then your strategy comes away with the put away and picking okay. and you need to have some kind of control parameters for your warehouse movement now when i talk about the word movement type what is it going to do it is going to tell you and classify with a key in the warehouse system that is going to describe the goods movement within the given warehouse number why are you going to use the movement types the reasons why you need to use your movement types is you need to know how the stock categorized based on the count created by the movement what is the indicator control all this you are supposed to know can you just give all the required information and say execute its mandatory element is your plant so pmpl and i say execute now here it says activate this function where are you going to activate this function if i have not done this activation right okay. getting my point if i don't activate this this would not take place in this again when i talk about the word field selection there are certain fields that you need to keep it mandatory based on that fields you will be setting up the inputs and then you will start entering it and then the document moves further so if you observe this flow of ours right this is to create a physical inventory document so what did i do i have shown you one environment I am now planning to create one physical inventory document. When I want to create one physical inventory document, I am entering the transaction code MI zero one. I enter my plant. i enter my storage location posting blocks i enter my physical inventory number i enter my material number that i have created i enter the other material
I see the stock type. Stock type 2 refers to quality inspection. I enter another material 808. I enter 4 which is blocked stock and I say save. My physical inventory document got created and the number is 42. Now this is how I create a physical inventory document. So for that you need to have an input from material management. You should have done the settings. Right. With the planned count date, document date, system would pick up a date from the entity. Assume that you are trying to do a entry of inventory count. When you are doing a entry of inventory count, you use MI04. You enter your inventory, give the variations, variance in percentage 5, enter this quantity, enter your and when you say save you have done some kind of changes to the existing document 42 so the count is being entered in the document 42 this count has to be checked you do some changes to the inventory count after a physical inventory that you have done So you use your transaction code MI05, you enter your document 42, after removing the inventory count document, you found out that the quantity in item 1 and item 3 must have changed. You add a count to be mentioned as 10220 and you wanted this count for item 3 to be 2 you get a message that at the bottom a warning message appears for item 3 because the count value differs from the book value which is more than 5% so it is not meeting to the 5% you go and see the physical inventory history in this history you see the location of your physical inventory promotion and quantity values promotion quantity values go back save the changes you get a message count changed for physical inventory 42 done this is what is changes now you have to post the differences or enter the count without any references this is another function MI09 You give your variance Give your product Quantity
physical thought or you will think of post. You get a message count entered for physical inventory document 45. Then you can also do this is without reference. This is posting the inventory details. So here the threshold value field is maximum amount in local currency up to the inventory differences are allowed. See the difference quantity. The post differences will tell you the difference quantity in the column list. Now see the difference. So if you see the display of the inventory history, right, the quantity and the value group is broken down with the count with book value, book quantity. Choose for the second item. Choose for the third item. display the header level information so the plant storage location date and status with respect to the now these are all your indicating settings that you are doing so when this physical inventory is being performed and the goods has to be placed in the warehouse that time you need to have the storage details also Am I now at least convincing? Here you see the difference. So the verification of items would take place and the items would get posted with the difference. So after posting the difference, you get a confirmation message <coughs> with your material document 49000050. Is this clear so far? This was with reference to your Invent physical inventory. When you are doing this physical inventory, you are trying to get the goods within the organization or you are moving the goods from the warehouse to the customer. At this point of time, you need to have your warehouse movements decided. So when you talk about goods receipt process, what is happening with the goods receipt for the PO that you are raised? So your goods receipt is with reference to a PO. So you go to your transaction code MIG. You enter your purchase order. Enter your delivery note. And click on execute. Enter your quantity. And 
and to confirm all the entries item ok then you get into your WK enter your storage location you check whether that material is existing and you post material document 132 poster now this is your goods received based on your purchase order other goods received so you mb1c this document is going to pick up the document date and posting date default from the current system you enter your movement type this movement type refers 501 receipt without purchase order into warehouse. Now these are your various movement types designed with reference to your WF. And that's what we were discussing that the movement types like for the special movement indicators what are you supposed to do? How are you going to set up your system? This is possible for special where you are having a automatic retrieval from the material master or are you going to enter manually? If you have a configuration of your system as described with the set of indicators, then the evaluation or the evaluator automatic function to the corresponding activity carries out in the warehouse for the corresponding goods movement using the material for which your special material indicators were defined automatically so indicators will support you to perform automatic function if you have not given indicators then you will not have the functioning of automatic then you do the opposite activity called manual in this manual the systems would go on with the movement goods movement by posting it manually and you have to perform this with your warehouse parameters so check out your various warehouse parameters These are your various various parameters. Then these parameters are triggered, then the functioning would be taken place automatically or it would help you to perform it manually. So let us complete this step. Once I have entered my movement type, enter your plant, enter your storage location, special stock, enter your materials 805 what is the quantity enter your other material and say save Once this is done, you can also do the posting of goods received for a purchase order 
where the vendor is unknown. You search your vendor one zero two three six. This is also possible. Check. Material with the vendor is exist. Post. Post. This was goods receipt. You have the same thing with goods issue. Now you are going to select your movement type according to the goods issue concept. So consumption for pass center from warehouse 201. Plant. Cost center. Material. Display you get your account assignment function. This is possible because you have linked your plant, you have linked your material, you have linked your movement type with account determination from the cost center point of view. And you should have created a GL account which gets assigned to the goods issue for the cost center automatically. Now this automatic has happened because of the indicator setting of goods move. Is this at least now convincing? Yes sir. And how about you Mr. Nayib? I no questions. Now, is the concepts clear or it is out of box solution? Naomi, you are getting everything, or I am only asking the stupid question. I don't know. No. Basically, uh, uh, whatever uh, we reading, uh, I, I had a, uh, I had my consultant there up to today. So as far as uh, I had no uh, objection, no, no reasonable question. See, I basically don't mind whether the person is asking me a interesting question or a silly question because the question is coming because you are thinking about the subject. That is my belief. And I like people who think about the subject. And in this activity, I would like to correct one thinking process of yours. Wait. We are in one part of ERP system called warehouse management. Whereas warehouse management is a part of entire logistic solutions. So you may not see all the outputs as required 
but you are setting up a situation for a activity to take place in a smooth way in your warehouse movements there is one more component called transfer requirements is this clear so far i have done a physical inventory i have done goods receipt process i have done goods issue process let me do one concept of stock transfer or transferring post or transfer posting stock transfer fundamental concept is a good is moving from plant a to plant b internally plant a to plant b internally on some request purpose so when you say stock transfer business process it is involving the physical movement of goods either from a company code to company code plant to plant storage location to storage location and what all can be moved you can have a transfer posting from material to material you can release from quantity inspection stock you can transfer a consignment material into company's own stock now these are all possible special scenarios when you are doing this function the posting of transfer that is transfer posting can happen from material to material quality inspection to unrestricted use transfer consignment stock to company stock or stock transfer with the above three plant to plant storage location to storage location company code to company code when you are doing this you need to know one strategy is it using one step or two step procedure one step procedure or two step procedure is a principle been adopted in warehouse concept or a inventory management concept so if you observe this screen one step process versus two step process both stock transfer and transfer posting consists of goods issue from an issuing point and a goods received at the receiving point is this point clear and you can post the stock transfer from storage locations to storage plant to plant in one step or two step the two step procedure on the other hand allows you to monitor the stock in transit in the first one you can't monitor second one you can monitor so after the goods issue post at the issuing point and the stock appears in the stock transfer at the receiving point and is managed such as the system is able to identify the link now this would be your two step call one with the monitoring one without monitoring and when will you use this function you use this function based on a scenarios it's always not necessary that you will use two step process you can use either two step one step procedures you can also do this stock transfer using stock transport order so you have a stock transport or a transfer order right the stock transfer order is a document which is used for executing the goods movement within the or with the help of warehouse management physically or logically connecting the goods movement or stock change on the basis for the transfer order which includes picking put away posting changes repacking and inventory where is this transfer order used 
the transfer orders documentation can come from a delivery document transfer requirement material document or posting the change notice then when you are doing this can the transfer order consist all the necessary information that is required for planned goods movement yes you should have what should be moved which goods has to be moved which quantity should be moved and where should it be in the bin to be moved from the source storage bin to the destination storage bin so the transfer order consists for the transfer component gets this general information based at the transfer order header transfer order item and it is going to contain informations about your source storage bin destination storage bin return storage bin these are all the inputs that you need to do when you are doing your transfer order process and this was one of the functions or special function now i have a stock overview i use my transaction code mmbe i enter my material number 805 in this the fields that i am showing plant storage and the batch here i am talking about stock type selection this stock type selection is now going to drill down the activities based on the indicators mentioned here company code plant and storage location this is going to talk about the list display parameters at what level you are searching and what levels you are displaying it and now i have put necessary requirements and say execute now this is the output now this is the overview and here the concept is unrestricted use of stock transfer this is what with the plant material number 805 i can also display where of stock mb 52 i enter my material number plant this is having a stock transfer from plant 00102011 and say execute this is the list displayed for all the stocks on and for the material 805 in plant 0010 and 0011 with the quality inspection and some stocks are blocked so you can have a look at the conditions which has been mentioned in the red then i want to do the material document listing with material movements mb51 material number 805 plant
select the criteria display option as per the layout data source the data is now coming from the database which is supposed to read it from the database directly and you have put this indicator and I say execute this is the output this is plant 0010 plant 001 0011 with the material and the finished good concept semi finished good concept of material type then transfer posting MB one B document and posting date will be picked up from the server movement type here transfer posting plan to plan one step and if you see here I have V02 if it is a reversal activity now what is a reversal activity is again another business scenario so I am selecting receiving point plant material quantity and say save transfer posting document is saved now you need to know are you interested in taking a printout that is output device are you interested in having it as a GRGI slip goods receipt goods issue slip if it is so are you doing it at an individual split with inspection of the text and these are all conditions that you are doing and this was your inventory management the money that has to go from the accounts department to that particular vendor you are going to create a vendor invoice or are you, you are going to create a vendor credit memo let me create a credit memo to the vendor this is done by the FICO process you go to transaction code FB65 you select your vendor you add your vendor 10 23237 document date amount are you going to calculate the tax so the system is going to pick up the purchase info record concept of the vendor and it is going to pull the data of the payment terms and in your vendor management you would have done this payment terms and the address of the vendor and that gets reflected here you are supposed to select your GL account GL account is again linked with your chart of accounts so this is my GL account detail
what is the document currency what is the tax code u1 so this is done by the finance person you link it to your appropriate cost center cost center is again linked with your controlling area and company code and you press enter and then say assume it now there is a posting and this document we call it as vendor credit memo so whatever we have seen with the mm activity with the warehouse with the inventory management and with the vendor memo that you have created i can also perform certain activities like automatic payment run automatic payment run is something which is very interesting when the indicators have been set up in combination so you have f110 you select the date select parameter enter your company code payment method date vendor number status tab save data parameter enter propose start immediately schedule status you see here enter proposal is ready now to be started payment proposal has been created click proposal all accounting clerks done so this is your automatic payment activity and the concept here is it is outgoing payment if it is a vice versa activity it would be a incoming payment then it would be a debit money run see the status of you payment run has been carried out posting order 1 generated and one completed you want to perform edit function payments payment list continue this is the payment list now this payment list is having all the piece of information keeping the warehouse inventory management goods movement movement types and so on and get it executed am i clear with this cycle what i have shown or is this a bounced class
And this comes from the FICO point, so you will not practice it. This is for you to have a clarity of understanding. The reason why I showed you this cycle is to complete one output. This was your transfer. Now when you do this, it uses script. Accounting, sorry, logistic, execution. Yes. You will now decide whether are you going to perform master data, warehouse, storage bin, create. Are you doing it manually or are you creating it automatically? Let me say manually. What is your storage type? I am selecting fixed bin. What is your storage bin? Now this you have to do the settings there. Am I clear? If this should be the output, the previous steps what all we did has to be done systematically. This is an end user script. We saw about what is automatic, what is interim level, what is interim storage. What is interim storage? What is interim storage? You are referring, you are thinking, what is the reaction? Uh, so, interim storage is a place where uh, when we receive the goods, etc., we show the place where we put the storage. One more answer. It is a warehouse being used in warehouse as well as inventory management. One line answer. Your warehouse is not exclusively used for warehousing purpose, but also a physical inventory where purpose also. You enter your warehouse number T and C. Now this screen, what you do it with, master it. Then you will be having a transportation activity. The warehouse functions, whatever you do, you need to have a transportation lane being decided of how it has to come to your. So you have the door concepts. How is the designing of your warehouse is being done? That is your warehouse. Structuring.
then what are the partners involved is it a when the customer if it is a customer it has to go from the sd point and that becomes an outbound if it is a inbound it is a vendor if it is a service agent a third party entity a material are you creating a material Service agent. Department. Service agent. In your warehousing, there are two concepts called 3PL, 4PL. I think Naim can talk more about this 3PL, 4PL. Naim, what is 3PL and 4PL? Very honest, no idea. <laughs> third party logistics fourth party logistics assume that you have ordered a product on snapdeal or a flipkart or an amazon right is are they having a logistics executional activity of delivering it from the department they owe it or do they give it to the third party person and that third party person how is he accessing that information or is he using the snapdeal's warehouse or snapdeal as a universal warehouse even flipkart keeps their snapflow also keeps it now that is how a service agent comes into picture so service agent is a third party concept or a fourth party concept he is also a person in nature or an organization in nature concept is the same you will be having one accounting group purchase organization company code it's basically a vendor yeah it's a vendor only but is 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 a third party concept in logistics you can have for example we'll put it in this way naive you can correct me if i'm wrong this is a very old concept of my logistics there is an organization this organization is having a logistics company it has a warehouse company it has shipping company and all these companies belongs to this one okay so they are not depended on any kind of third party clear they have their own transportation vehicles that is vehicle management they have their own activities this is one set of company which is having a entire global presence now there is another company which has a strong logistics it is not interested in maintaining a warehouse they have given it to another location and in warehouse they can only maintain warehouse they are not interested in maintaining the shipping activity they have given it to another company and this another company has given their vehicle transportation to another company and this organization is getting a material from a vendor this organization is giving the material to the customer then 
then for me all these are my servicing agents so can't i say that these servicing agents are nothing but again vendor who is fulfilling my requirement so these things i can call it as 3 pls or 4 pl of veros and transport management so getting this Yeah, we we currently using this, but we never use this term uh, terminology three PLs. You use that concept as three PL. Yeah, uh, we at the moment we uh, currently having all these service agents. Now, for example, your Walmart, right? I think you're working for Walmart, right? No, I'm not express. Okay. the same thing yeah so now these concepts they are not interested in investing huge operational cost in owing all these things that is one behavior or assume that they want to have a control and they want to show them that they are globally present in all the verticals so every organization will have two kinds of vertic uh, two kinds of horizon called vertical horizon or or we can have a vertical or horizontal horizon wait now the vertical and the horizontal horizons of a company will tell you how what is the size and how are they doing their business model so in simple words 3 pl 4 pl are key pillars of your warehouse management or transport management or service industry sector so in that case you will be preparing one service provider or service agent who can be a person in nature or organization in nature that is partner then you have your material we saw this using your mm01 you would have created a material you would have done material determination now when i use the word material determination how are you going to pick up the material automatically based on the conditions so you need to have one condition type so enter the material right so there are no record for this selection is right here means the indicators is set up but the data in that indicators are not there what are the possible key combinations i enter the number and the concepts here now the system would pick up its proposed reasons i am doing this for a promotional activity i am doing this for a advertising campaign i am trying to do some kind of availability check now these are all proposed reasons and this is your material determination procedure
you can create the material with reference to a existing structure you can also perform a hazardous material if ehs environment is being added what type of hazardous system are you talking about why is it used so depending on the industry this particular material concept comes into picture then what are the conditions what is the discount and surcharge conditions for the customer for the material for the pricing group so for the material you create a condition now what is this table consists of so you need to have a sales organization district now this is all what you will be seeing or getting it done from their respective but you can use it under warehouse management what is the purpose of those condition that is condition because Okay. Assume that you have one Motorola cell phone in your hand. Okay. This Motorola has identified a channel to reach a customer based in a particular country. Right. If you have selected that Flipkart or Flipkart, and in that you have selected country US, right. all the concepts would be kept in condition with us if you would have selected india you would have got it with india conditions if you have selected uk then uk conditions or uae according to that but when i am saying a condition there was a campaign taken place on 0102 2017 2040 in that the campaign is talking that if you are booking this particular product based on the coupon value in your cell phone by adding that or downloading that app then you will be getting 15% discount now that 15% discount if you talk from the original cost of the product minus 15000 15% on the condition applied between the speculated time and it has to be downloaded on your cell phone now those are all conditions that is one concept of material condition pricing condition is what is the example i gave you conditions are controlling parameters there is always something called as input tax output tax when a material is coming you are getting it with 2% tax of your freight charges so you have certain inco terms decided by the international body of trading of how to calculate the freight charges discount so in the previous case of motorola cell phone with the flipkart as a channel i have given you 15% discount that is only valid for the time given using that particular campaign and that is possible only when a app of that particular day with that coupon number is downloaded you can even do the purchase using flipkart or snap flipkart activity on your laptop but you will not find that 15% discount so conditions are the controlling parameters of how you are determining the process with respect to the predefined conditional tables condition types access sequence records and fields 
I make clear. Output. Output is something where you have to decide with scenarios. Wherein, assume that if this organization has decided to get a material from the vendor and the process is inbound and it has a logistic function where it has a third party warehouse, it has a third party shipping, it has a third party vehicle management services. This organization's purchase department right, need to raise a purchase requisition, request for quotation, quotation, release your quotation to a concept of purchase order and this purchase order has to be released again to the set of vendors. Okay. So in this journey, what is happening? The document is moved from one end to the other end. Okay. The output for purchase requisition is going to be RFQ. Output for RFQ is going to be quotation. Quotation's output is going to be a purchase order. This purchase order will reach the vendor only when there is a release procedure done. And this vendor, how is he getting the purchase order? Is he getting it in the mail form? Is he getting a copy to his postal address? Is he be given a call and found out with this postal address is mapping or not? Now that is your output concept. Am I clear? Am I clear? So when will a inbound activity takes place? Inbound activity will take place from the customer's point of view. Can you give me the same activity? Try out. Can you give me all the blacks keeping the red ones in mind? Can you give me all the blacks keeping in mind with the red ones? Then the entire thing would go with sales document or sales organization. Quite opposite. Agreed? So you have the inbound delivery taking place from the vendor, you have an outbound delivery taking place from the customer, to the customer. When you are doing the shipping activities, you should know how are they handled with your handling units. So you select an output type, shipping unit. What are the key combinations? You need to have a shipping material type. What is the proposed shipping packaging material type? I wanted it in the form of a container. What is the function of that container? Is it a person who has approved it or a shipping party? So I say shipping point. Who is the person involved as a shipping point? You need to have a BP created for shipping point. 
so you obviously chose no entries here then you should know what is the message transmission media that you are communicating so i need to have either a printout or a fax or a simple mail or a physical practice of picking up your landline number and calling up that center and now a rfid concept has come into picture and all this is being tracked with the sensors so let us go with a traditional concept called print output if this is your print output what is the dispatch time dispatch time you need to run one program called rsnats t00 this program is triggering four possible time frames if you have selected time frame 1 the message is processed through report program and this report program can be scheduled periodically or started manually so based on the types you give the settings here and obviously this has to be language dependent and this language dependent should have a display text entry text and a print document now this is your condition record where you have set in the background and you are using it i make clear now if handling unit is done i want to go for a billing document now the question is will the warehouse component need to handle a billing document or create a billing document they definitely need to handle it so you can have only display function then there is a very interesting activity called partner conversion what is this partner conversion doing it is like your race passing the stick in the run right and when it is fulfilled the entire team wins but the last person only has put some efforts in saying that the entire circle is been won by him so there is a continuity with one set of functional people so in this shipping can't be a separate entity saying i am not going to pick the material from the warehouse if these two people have agreed and the vehicle is not coming if all are agreed this logistic department has not given their supporting documents either to reach the customer or to reach the vendor so you need to have sometimes a responsibility of connecting all this am i clear no reply yeah, it's okay so this is what is a, yeah this is what is a cycle that we have seen clear
so i will surrender this document right which as these tips and all the topics that we have covered so far there are few steps which we will be covering in future that also i have just mentioned it just have a note of it wait so totally somewhere around 50 i think Sixty two steps has been done. Right? So don't feel that this is something very shocking. Right. You are still open. This can be again clarified when we are doing EWM activities in a bigger picture point of view. In your EWM also you will have the same terminologies used, but in your wm you are doing it for a concept of a small entity okay, where the transactional activities are not so large reporting is not done at a larger scale but your supply chain management system when it expanded and it had a analytical activity be now the question is i should take a decision in such a way that i have vm1 vm2 i am vm3 the system should be in a position which vehicle should be picked up which shipment process has to be followed what is the transportation routing technique for the goods to be moved out from the warehouse to the customer or to the vendor right. now that is all dynamically done in your ew so the same concepts will repeat but everything would be from the scm point of view am i clear right. 